Hello everyone, it's Annie, and today I have my April wrap-up. So, in April, I co-hosted my first readathon, which was Linguathon, which I co-hosted with Noelle from Noelle Seven Pages, and I read all of the prompts for it, and it was a blast. I read some amazing, amazing books. So first, I'm going to talk about those. So first, I read Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, which was my first Elizabeth Acevedo book, and my gosh, did I love it. I gave it five stars. I was so enamored with this book. If you don't know already, it's about two sisters who don't know their sisters until their father dies in a plane crash. One lives in the Dominican Republic and the other lives in New York City. And they discover each other and build this relationship with each other. And I, I absolutely loved it. It deals with grief, it deals with family and learning that sometimes, you know, your family isn't who they you thought they were. I thought both of these sisters were absolutely incredibly well-crafted characters, and I will now read anything and everything <laughs> Elizabeth Acevedo writes. And then I read The Beast Player by Nahoko Uehashi, which was for the prompt read a YA in translation. So this is a fantasy YA book, and it was great. I loved it. I gave it four stars. I thought it was super unique, and it has so much to do with the relationship between man and animals. I really, really liked that part of it a lot. So it is about this girl who... Man, it's hard to explain because this book is a bit complicated. <laughs> but basically she ends up going to this school to take care of these creatures who are called the royal beasts and she becomes like really close to one of them and it is her journey to become that and her journey to kind of protect these royal beasts from the humans who are trying to take advantage of them and also deal with the politics of the particular fantasy world that she lives in and wow, this book was super, super unique. It it was great. <laughs> I really liked the main character so, so much. And there's also a sequel to this, which I am really looking forward to reading very soon. And then I read our group book, Babel 17 by Samuel R. Delaney. I gave it three stars. It definitely has that 60s sci-fi flavor. <laughs> kind of outdated, and kind of a mess. <laughs> but we chose this for our group book because it has so much to do with language. The main character, Rai Jira Wong, is a poet slash linguist slash translator. Um, <laughs> and she is tasked with translating this code slash language called Babel 17 to help her people win this intergalactic war. So that happens, but then other things happen that honestly I did not even understand because it was so convoluted and did not make any sense. So yeah, I I thought that the the greatest part of this book was Samuel R. Delaney's discussion of the Sapir Whorf principle, which basically says that the language everyone speaks determines how they see the world which has since been disproven, but I think it's still a really interesting theory. And if you're into classic sci-fi, this is definitely a classic that you should read. But even though I like sci-fi, I also know that I don't really like classic sci-fi, especially from this era. So I'm not disappointed by it because I didn't really expect too much from it to start with. But yeah, I, I thought it was a good pick for a language-themed readathon. And then I read The Memory Police, which fulfilled the prompts to read a sci-fi slash fantasy book. This is a dystopian novel by Yoko Ogawa, very famous Japanese novelist, and wow, it was great. It was amazing. It was my first Ogawa book. Definitely am going to read The Housekeeper and the Professor as soon as I can. This book was beautiful. It's about this woman who is also an author, 
and she grows up on an island where things periodically go missing. And these lost items go missing from everyone's memory as well, except there are certain people who can still remember them, and they are sought after by the memory police, and it's kind of scary. <laughs> It's a really, really interesting dystopian novel that I think should be taught alongside the famous ones like 1984, Fahrenheit 451, things like that. I think this book was absolutely brilliant, and if you're at all interested in Japanese literature or dystopian literature, definitely give it a go. Then I read a nonfiction book about language, Word by Word by Cory Stamper. This book was fascinating. I gave it five stars as well. It's about the author's experience working as a lexographer on a dictionary. And I was so fascinated by this. Like, it made me want to do her job. I would absolutely love doing this job. She sits in a completely silent office and reads and looks for words all day. <laughs> That's what I would like to do. It was so, so fascinating. I really, really enjoyed reading about how she does her job, and I loved it. If you're at all interested in language, please read this book because, man, it was fascinating, and it really gave me a new respect for dictionaries. <laughs> And then, last but not least for this readathon, we have Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. So, this was translated from Polish, and I gave it four stars. It is a thriller. I really, really enjoyed it. It's about this older woman who lives in rural Poland, and she wakes up one night when her neighbor dies, and it's so creepy and atmospheric and again kind of touches on the relationship between man and animal a lot i guess that's a theme <laughs> in these books i really enjoyed it however i i don't know if it was intentional or not by the author but i think the answer to the mystery was kind of obvious from the beginning maybe that was intentional maybe it wasn't but Again, I really enjoyed it. I think the narrative voice was super unique. The main character, very, very interesting and quirky and fun to read about. I also really liked that she did astrology. I thought that was just a fun thing to add in and really added a new dimension to the story. And yeah, aside from her neighbor dying, a bunch of other people are found dead as well, and that's the mystery in this town. I recommend you read this if you're at all interested in thrillers or translated literature. This is a really, really good book. So now let's talk about the arcs I read. I read two arcs. The first one was Sorrowland by River Solomon. I was very excited to get this arc. I read The Deep by River Solomon last month, and I, I don't think this book was for me. <laughs> this book was not really what I expected. The synopsis is that it is about this 15-year-old girl who was pregnant with twins and she ran away from a cult and she had the twins in the woods and she was living in the woods and then things happen. Um, some really weird messed up things happen <laughs> that I did not expect. I thought this book was going to be about the cult, and it was, but it was not rooted in reality very much. There was a weird magical realism element to it that I think could have worked, but it was just too weird for me. There were like mushrooms involved. It was strange, <laughs> and to me it didn't really add anything to the book. It just kind of weirded me out and like didn't make me want to read it. <laughs> But I ended up giving the book three stars. I mean, I think it was a very unique and creative book, and I definitely want to read more from River Solomon, and I'm just glad that I got this arc. But yeah, if you're wanting, again, a book about cults, be careful because there's some weird stuff going on here <laughs> that you might not be ready for. 
And then I read Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Now, I read The Martian by him, and I loved it. I have not read Artemis by him. Haven't gotten great reviews, but I just haven't read it. <laughs> it's on my TBR. But this one was great. I gave it 4.5 stars. This book was so, so good. The only reason it's not five stars is because I felt like it was a little bit slow to start off. It was a little bit difficult to get into the story in the beginning, but once it passed like the 25% mark, it really took off and I was invested. I absolutely love this. It is a story about this man who wakes up from a coma on a spaceship and he doesn't know his name, he doesn't know why he's there, what happened, and what's going on, and he has to figure it out. And, oh, the story that Andy Weir crafted was so creative. And I know, like, it's a sci-fi thriller, so there's a lot of twists and turns that I really felt like I was going through with the main character. And the main character's voice, his narrative voice, was so, so funny and really entertaining to read. I, I loved him, and it's also a first contact story, and I loved it so, so much. I know a lot of people say they want, like, wholesome sci-fi. Honestly, I think this counts. It was heartwarming, <laughs> a lot of it. And yeah, there are some really serious parts or, like, suspenseful parts, but a lot of it was really heartwarming, and I highly recommend this. There is a lot of science, but... Honestly, you don't really you don't need to understand like the intricacies of the math in the book. I didn't. But just get the general gist of it. That's fine. Like don't be scared. <laughs> Please read this. Next, I will briefly touch on all of the books from the Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist that I read this month. I read all six books which were How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Sherry Jones. Transcendent Kingdom by Yad Yassi, The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller, and No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. Now, in order to save myself, <laughs> give myself a little bit of a break, I'm not going to go in depth about these here because I just posted my vlog about it so you guys can hear my thoughts about all of these books on there. But just suffice to say that I enjoyed pretty much all of them, and some of them really wowed me. So if you haven't seen that vlog, definitely check it out. It was so much fun to film. But I have two more, because I actually started filming that vlog before the shortlist was announced so that I could get it out faster. So I kind of had to predict which books I thought would make it to the shortlist. So I ended up reading two books from the long list that actually didn't end up making it to the short list. So I'll talk about those right now. They are exciting times. I am going to get that name wrong, so you can read it on the screen. <laughs> she is an Irish author, and I see this book getting really bad reviews, but I liked it. <laughs> I kind of wish it was on the short list, to be honest. I I liked it a lot. I, I don't know what that says about me. But I really enjoyed it, and I also found out that it fits for the Reading Women's Challenge read a book by a neurodivergent author because the author of this is autistic. I think that this book was super re relatable, which might scare some people because I've seen people really hate on this main character. I mean, yeah, she was annoying, but I felt like she talks a lot about feminism and socialism, and the politics between Britain and Ireland, which some reviews say are hard to understand. I, I feel like, personally, I only have a passing knowledge of it, and I understood it just fine. Like, if you're up on any sort of current events, you're gonna be fine. And she is teaching English in Hong Kong. I am teaching English in Japan right now, so I kind of felt like I had a connection to the book already. And I thought it touched on some really, really interesting topics. I feel like it could have gone deeper, such as her feelings on teaching English to Hong Kong children. 
and she's basically teaching them the language of the colonizer. And especially being Irish, she kind of feels the same way because <laughs> English and Irish don't, you know, there's a lot of conflict there. So I thought it was really brilliant. I gave it 3.5 stars because, like I said, I thought it could have been done better, like gone a little deeper, I mean, into those issues. But I guess I'm a little biased because I teach English, so I wanted to read more about that. The main synopsis is not about that. It's about that she is basically like in a love triangle. There's this guy who is very obviously not good for her, but she's like obsessed with and living with. And then there's this girl that she meets who is awesome, but she's like having trouble deciding, which is kind of frustrating. And honestly, I didn't really care very much. <laughs> like the girl was great and those scenes were great, <laughs> but just her talking about, like, sexual stuff with the guy, like, I just did not care. And that was a lot of the book, so that kind of took a star away for me. I feel like if we had less of that and more exploration of the main character's opinions and politics, I would have enjoyed it more. But all in all, 3.5. And then I ended up reading Consent, which I gave 2.5. <laughs> I thought this book was very interesting. I can see why it was nominated for the long list, but I definitely see why it's not on the short list. <laughs> um, it was very short. It follows two sets of sisters. One set of sisters, they, one sister is disabled, the other is tasked with looking after her after their mother passes away, and she sort of resents that, and things happen. And then the other set of sisters, they are twins. One sister is put in a coma from a car accident, and the other sister deals with that in her own way. I felt like I never really got to know the characters. I was never invested in them. The overall story was fine, but I feel like there was way too much of the characters, like, going shopping and saying and going into these highly expensive exclusive boutiques and like trying on dresses and buying perfume like I I guess there was some point that was trying to be made there but I was just bored out of my mind to be honest it was not interesting but I did like the ending so I don't know if you're into like s books that are contemporary but have a thriller aspect to them, but are also weird and cerebral, you might like this book. So check it out. And let me go through some books that I am also going to talk about in a vlog that I probably have not posted yet, but if I haven't, it will be out very, very soon. So again, I won't go in depth on these too much. One is The Incendiaries by R. O. Kwan. <laughs> no. The other one is The Girl with the Louding Voice. Yes, oh, this I, I have to say, this is my favorite book that I've read this month. It was amazing. It's five stars, so, so, so good. It's about a girl who is born into poverty in Nigeria and her quest to get an education. And, oh, it is so good. The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin about four siblings who were told the date of their deaths but don't know how they're going to die and they have to live their lives knowing this information. Becoming by Michelle Obama, which five stars, amazing, just absolutely stellar. I am so glad I finally got to read this book. So yeah, I, I loved it so much. And it makes me want to read Barack Obama's Promised Land after this. And then the last one I read for this vlog was Essentialism, which is a self-help book about kind of minimizing what you prioritize in your life. And yeah, I this vlog is about reading like my Enneagram type, so please check it out when it goes up because it was a lot of fun. So if you want to hear my thoughts about these books, please check it out. So now let's talk about the random books I read. One of them was How Dare the Sun Rise, and again, I know I'm going to mispronounce this name, so you can read it on the screen. 
This was a memoir about the author who grew up in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and she is part of a marginalized minority tribe in that country who are unfortunately subjected to brutal attacks. And she was in a refugee camp when it was attacked and her members of her family were killed. And eventually she and her remaining family make it as refugees to the United States. And her story was just absolutely captivating to read, so heartbreaking. I learned a lot. I honestly knew zero about the Democratic Republic of the Congo and the conflict there. I knew absolutely nothing about it. And I am grateful that she wrote this book so I could learn about it and learn about her struggles and her life and also the struggles of other refugees who come to the United States. It was really eye-opening and I honestly picked up this book on a whim just because it looked somewhat interesting and I am really glad I did because it ended up being one of my favorite reads this month. So if you're looking for a really good memoir a la I Am Malala, I really recommend this. I also read Aisha at Last, which is for the Down Memory Jane read-along, and it is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice, except the characters are all Muslim, and I thought that was really, really interesting. I thought it was fun. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of a mess plot-wise, to be honest, especially towards the end. It got a little messy and kind of convoluted, but honestly, I just thought it was really fun. <laughs> I really liked the main character and the Darcy love interest. I thought it was brilliant, a really, really interesting retelling. So as someone who doesn't like romance, I find that if it happens to be a retelling of a Jane Austen book, then I will like it. So I, I thought it was good. If you're looking for, again, a great retelling from a fresh perspective, or just a fluffy kind of, you know, whatever romance. <laughs> I thought it was good. I ended up giving it three stars just because, you know, it wasn't anything stellar, but it was enjoyable, an enjoyable read. And then I read Liberty, which was one of my most anticipated historical fictions of 2021. And I also ended up giving this three stars. Yeah, I had a bit of like a slump towards the mid-April range because I read a lot of average books. I liked this book. I liked part one. It follows this little girl, Liberty, who is a girl who was born free and her mother was as well. They live in Pennsylvania, I believe, and they live in a black village, but they were born free. Her mother works as a doctor, and she wants her daughter Liberty to join her in that profession, but Liberty doesn't want to. And she ends up going on a different path and marrying a Haitian man and moving to Haiti with him. And I think that I simultaneously wanted more and less from this book. I think it could have been tightened up could have used more editing. Not that the writing was bad. The writing was great, I thought. I thought it was really well done. And I really liked Liberty's character. And Liberty's relationship with her mother is kind of what ties parts one and part two together. Parts one takes place in America, part two is in Haiti. But I just think, again, there were some parts that felt like they kind of dragged on and some parts that seemed really interesting but were only touched on, and I feel like it, it could have been better balanced, and I kind of wanted more about Liberty and less about her husband. I, yeah, there were some great, great bones, great characters, also some LGBT rep, although not in a main character, but still it was there, and I, all in all, I am glad that I read this. It wasn't, definitely wasn't a waste of time. I enjoyed it, but yeah, I just thought it could have been better. But even so, three stars, definitely not bad. And then we have another three star book, which is The Weight of Our Stars by Kay Ankrum. I am so upset. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be a five star read for me, or at least a four, but sadly not. 
Uh, it follows this girl named Ryan who is kind of in with the bad crowd. She's, she comes from a troubled home and she is economically disadvantaged and she meets a new girl in town who she tries to befriend but the new girl doesn't want to be friends. The new girl's problem is that her mother went on a one-way trip to space and left her alone. <laughs> I thought that that concept was very interesting, but there were some things about this book that just had me rolling my eyes while I was trying to read it. First of all, Ryan and her friend group trying to befriend this girl, they literally bully her, like physically, and I don't really get what that was trying to do, but it didn't make me enjoy it anymore. <laughs> like, I didn't enjoy reading about that, and I thought it was... I don't know. I, it was very misguided. Just the whole friend group, like, it was very YA. It felt very YA, and obviously it is a YA book, but the whole story felt very cliche YA, if you know what I mean. I really enjoyed that the main characters are in a sapphic relationship, that was great, but some of it was really unrealistic, just like the things that these kids are able to do, but they would not get away with in real life at all, and like, things would never happen in <laughs> real life. Like, also, she's such a small character, but their teacher no teacher would ever act like that, ever. Like, and if they did, they have some serious professionalism issues. So, yeah, there were parts of this book that I really took issue with, but I liked the space aspect of it, and I liked the two main characters together. So, all in all, again, it was not a waste. There were some things that really could have been done better for me, but I liked it in general. So that's the end of my April wrap-up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you want to hear my in-depth thoughts about the Women's Prize books or the books I read for my Enneagram type, please check out those vlogs. I'll have them linked down below if they're all up already. <laughs> and if they're not, please look forward to them. So if you liked this video, please like and subscribe to my channel for more bookish videos, and I'll see you next time. Bye!